What's going on everybody, C4 here, and welcome to the Madden 19, Madden 18 roster release here on the channel. Uh, what we are doing here, different from last year, last year we did 32 teams separately, so it was really over the span of a month. Today I'm going to break them up into divisions, so you're going to get 8 videos over the next week or week and a half or so. Uh, just running through these rosters and looking for feedback, I'm looking for you guys to pound the table for your teams, agreeing or disagreeing with the ratings, say this should be higher, this should be lower, because I want to make the top community rosters, you know why? Because with Rex Dixon stepping down, the creative director for Madden, for Madden 19, there's a chance we're about to get, you know, inappropriately touched up the butts for franchise mode next year. It might be just worse than what we got here in Madden 18, which is, seems impossible, right? But watch them just go heavy on the esports. It's something that no one, no, like literally the smallest segment of Madden people give a shit about and, and just ignore franchise mode. So there's a chance a lot of people are going to stay here on Madden 18. So my goal is to bring you guys the most accurate and fun rosters to use on Madden 18. Now, I will state that at the beginning, uh, I, I spent probably almost a day, 24 hours, making my own custom rosters, but then the offline player management tool, trying to work with free agency, making players' contracts less than what they want. I just got in a log jam. I couldn't make a single move, so I downloaded one of the top roster files on this. Uh, it's from Operation Sports. I think it's Apex something. I can't quote his name. But I downloaded his base file, and then I reworked everything in it. The only reason why I used his base file was for free agents, so that all the moves made. He did, though, have a couple rookies made, and their ages are wrong, and my OCD is very upset about that, because I just, I don't want to recreate another player like that, or have to deal with deleting it. Um, so, just one thing of note, is that the only thing I would say you can find inaccurate in these rosters, outside of maybe the free agency contracts or traded draft picks, because you can't really move those, is the ages of some of the rookies, because he only had, I think, like, 10, 15 rookies, and then I came in and put in like 60, 70 other ones. So that is that. Just throwing out, shout out to him for the base roster file. So today we're starting here with the Buffalo Bills, going through the AFC East, looking at the roster here. We are starting at quarterback. We gave Josh Allen a nice 75 overall. Now I had like an analytic scale where I looked at what people ran at the combine and what the ratings were in previous Madden games. Now it gets a little conflicted when you look at some pro day numbers versus the combine numbers. So I try to get as accurate as I could. So we're starting here first up with Josh Allen. Give me speed, man. He's probably after Lamar Jackson of the big quarterbacks because he's most athletic. He's like a mini Carson Wentz. So pretty much I mirrored him after what Carson Wentz got uh, at the combine. So good athlete, but more importantly, the big number for him is the 95 throw power. He is an absolute cannon of an ironman. As a rookie, is going to come in still with one of the biggest arms in football. At uh, the running back spot, we gave LaShawn McCoy here at 89 overall. Still one of the most underrated running backs in football. Had like 1,600 yards of scrimmage, 8 TDs last year. So he's getting a 78. Or 78. That's what Chris Ivory's getting. He's getting an 89. Uh, fullback, we have DeMarco, who we gave a 76. At wide receiver, we gave Kelvin Benjamin an 83. Needs a bounce back year for sure after getting trading from the Panthers. Uh, Zay Jones, hopefully he can get his mind right. He had a freak out in the offseason. Uh, I'm still gambling on him, which I, I, I gave him a 76. Uh, Holmes here, 75. Curly, 75. Uh, tight end, we give Charles Clay a generous 82 overall. He had just shy of 50 catches, 550 yards, two TDs, but he's you know he's well rounded. He can get versed in the blocking game, so we gave him an 82. Going to the offensive line, Deion Dawkins 76, Ryan Groy 71, Bodine 71, Dukas 75. Jordan Mills, 74. Now, for a lot of these, I did look and get as much free pro football focus uh, scores as I possibly can for a lot of the rookies and a lot of the offensive linemen. It's tough just positions that are pretty hard to judge, I think, just from knowing and watching football a lot. Uh, so most of, I would say 90% of the offensive line scores are in correlation to their pro football focus grades. Left defensive end, we get Trent Murphy coming up for the Redskins in 81. Hopefully, he can bring up the production he had at Washington, but then he popped for some illegal substance, so we don't know what they're going to get there. Uh, right defensive end, we give Jerry Hughes an 84. Now, a little bit of a down year for Jerry Hughes. Only four sacks on the season. Uh, so that's why he got a big-time reduction. I think he had a base 86, 87, somewhere in that range. So now he's an 84. Looking at D-tackle, Kyle Williams. Old man Kyle Williams, 82, still holding on there. They got Harrison Phillips, who was a really, really nice draft pick out of Stanford. 94, after having, a, what, 40-something on the bench press. Outstanding strength. Pretty much going to be the patient for Kyle Williams. He's a Kyle Williams regen. Star Lutulele gets a 73 for one of the most outrageous contracts I saw handed out here during the free agency period. That's a side linebacker, Lorenzo Alexander. Old man still hanging on there, 78. We gave Tremaine Evans a 77. Now, when you pop in here, this guy's a tremendous athlete. Make sure you give him that superstar dev trade. I think he's very much uh, a guy that's worthy of that. Right outside linebacker, Matt Milano gets a 73. 
in the secondary. Tredavious White gets an 89. Now, if Marshawn Lattimore didn't have the season he had for the Saints, Trey White would be talked about as like the, the best young corner in football. Uh, last year, he had four picks, 18 pass deflections. One of those was a pick six. Uh, I think he had like 60-some tackles. Outstanding season, so he gets an 89. But the rest of the secondary needs some work. Um... Free safety, Micah Hyde's getting 88. These, these safeties were balling last year for the Bills. Five picks from Micah Hyde, 13 pass deflections. I think just over 80 total tackles, so I think 88's a very good starting point for him. And Jordan Poirier got an 87. Hot as wag, hot as wife in the NFL. Uh, last year, five picks, 13 pass deflections, two sacks, 95 tackles. Outstanding season from Jordan Poirier. We have House Guy an 84 and Schmidt a 73. So Bills fans, do you agree to screen these ratings? Let me hear it. Next up, we have the Miami Dolphins. Look at the quarterback scenario. We give Ryan Tannehill a 79. I still feel that's a little bit generous. I, I do, I'm not on the same page as a lot of Dolphin fans here in my, in my rating of Ryan Tannehill. But I think 79. We'll see what he can do with Adam Gase's offense coming next season. At the running back spot, we have Frank Gore coming over from the Colts. Old man Frank Gore seems to have just endless, endless production. So he's getting an 81. I give Kenyon Drake a generous 81. Now, this looks a little bit different from some of the roster files I saw. But last year, 880-some yards, four total touchdowns, and he only played six games. He essentially started in six games. I think the upside is really high for Kenyon Drake. I don't know why the Dolphins are kind of against him. I don't know. Maybe they might even look at bringing in C.J. Anderson. But I think Kenyon Drake, they might have something there. Uh, so i definitely watch that. Uh, the wide receiver spot, Kenny Stills. We gave Kenny Stills here an 82 overall. Last year, Kenny Stills, 847 yards, 6 TDs on 58 catches. One of the better deep threats in the NFL. Devontae Parker is getting an 80. Is he going to be able to put it together this year? We don't know, but 57 catches, 670 and 1 last year. Amendola is coming over from the Patriots. More so a playoff performer, but still getting a 79. Wilson, a slot wide receiver from the Chiefs, 78. Jakeem Grant, special teams weapon, 71. With a tight end spot, Mike Gusecki. The guy that straight up jumped out the gym, 85 speed. Look at the jumping. Where's the jumping at? Just throw it up. You think jump ball is bad? 94 jumping on a 6'5 player. That's going to be incredibly overpowered. He's getting a 76, but I think he's pretty sure it's tied for uh, the highest overall 4'8 tight end in my rosters. They got Derby here and some other dudes at the tight end spot. Left tackle. We're giving Tunsil a 77. We're giving Josh Sitton an 86. Great get there from the Chicago Bears. Uh, Kilgore 72, Isiata 68, and Jawan James here with an 80. Decent offensive line. Defensive end, Cam Wake's getting an 87 overall. Again, kind of like Frank Gore, ageless wonder a little bit. Last year, Cam Wake, 10 and a half sacks. Sack specialist, he's getting 87. Willie Hayes, 82. Doesn't believe in dinosaurs, uh, but still is really solid against the run. Had a decent pro football focus score. Uh, right defensive end, Robert Quinn coming over from trade with the Rams. I like that move. He's getting an 80. Now he's going to be moving back to his more natural DN spot. You have Charles Harris here, a rookie. Didn't really do a whole lot last year. Uh, I think he only had like two sacks, sack and a half. So he's, his rating's going to go up one. He was a 75. I'm giving him a 76. The tackle, Davon Gosha from LSU. 75. Really, really underrated. Uh, good starting point. Trying to be able to re replace really what they're losing in Adama Kinsu, uh, Phillips, Taylor, and Gabe Wright. Outside linebacker, Stefan Anthony's getting a 70. Middle linebacker, Raekwon McMillan, 73. I expect a nice little turnaround from him. He was a low-key good pick out of Ohio State last season. And we get Kiko Alonso here, a 78 overall last season. Kiko Alonso, a pretty good tackle machine, over 100 total tackles. They got Jerome Baker as a rookie. I really like his athletic ability, undersized, kind of Ryan Shazier mold. Uh, he could very much challenge for that left outside linebacker role. At the quarterbacks, we gave pretty much their two top dogs here. Xavier Howard and McCain, 79s overall. Uh, nothing too crazy. Howard had four interceptions, 13 pass deflections. So maybe he could have been in the 80s. But I, I you know, I have a Dolphins fan, in-house Dolphin fan already. And they said that, you know, he had some nice stat lines, but did get beat a lot. 79 is a good starting point. Uh, you have Lippitt, 76. Cordrea Tankersley, 72. Secondary, you got Minka Fitzpatrick. You can't spell his whole name, which is frustrating as hell. I don't know why, but he's getting a base of an 80. I think he's top five for rookies this year. That's an excellent pairing. You have TJ McDonald, who may be moving to linebacker, but he'll stay at the 77. Uh, good athlete, though, here in Fitzpatrick. Good coverage ability, too. You probably could flex him in the corner if you really wanted to. That strong safety, one of the most underrated safeties in the NFL. Rashad Jones getting an 86 overall. I think he had 110 tackles, two picks last year. Really good playmaker. Two TDs as well. Uh... You know, they're working on special teams. 66 kicker, 78 punter. So there's are the Dolphins. Let me know if you agree or disagree. All right, moving on. We have the Jets. Why well, give Josh McCown one point higher than Ryan Tannehill just to trigger off all these Dolphin fans? But I thought McCown was pretty solid last year. But ultimately, it is going to be Sam Darnold's team. We gave him a 77 overall. I would suggest when you boot in, you give him the quick dev trait. 
gave him 92 throw power, 87 short, 82 medium, and 75 deep. He does struggle with his deep accuracy. Did not have the best years for USC, but still is hopefully the franchise there in New York. You have Teddy Bridgewater and Hackenberg here as well. The running backs, we have Isaiah Crowell coming over from the Browns with an 81. Same with Powell, 81. That could be a nice little tandem there. They got Rawls coming over from the Seahawks. And McGuire's the young back. That's, it's not terrible. Uh, random fullback, there you go. Wide receivers, we have Robbie Anderson, who got a little bit of hot water in the offseason, but he still gets an 83 overall, almost 1,000 uh, 1, yards last year, 7 TDs on 63 catches, really, really underrated. Still one of my better calls. I, I begged and pleaded one of my mock drafts for the Philadelphia Eagles to get him as an undrafted free agent. They didn't, which is frustrating. Curse gets an 82. He was solid last year, 800 yards, 5 TDs. You get a noon while they brought in Terrell Pryor from the Redskins. Hopefully he can turn it around. You just have a couple young guys down here. Lots of wide receivers. Looks like they're throwing everything to the wall and see what sticks. At the tight end spot, you have Clive Walford, who was recently released from the Raiders. Nothing too special here at the tight end spot. Uh, left tackle, Kevin Beach from 76. Carpenter, 71. Spencer Long, 73. You got Winter, 71. And Shell, 70. Pro Football Focus did not grade this offensive line well at all. Looking at the defense, Leonard Williams is getting an 85. Probably the best player on the roster. This guy is an absolute stud. Uh, last year, I think he only got two sacks, four, almost six. I think he had 50 some tackles. Uh, but, you know, it's always tough to try to, you know, produce. When you're 3-4 end, the talent is still very much there. So we give him an 85. Uh, right defensive end, yeah, 68 for Cooper. D-tackle, Steve McClendon. We gave him an 83. Graded well from Pro Football Focus. One of the better nose tackles, underrated nose tackles in the league. Almost had 50 total tackles. You have Nathan Shepard here, the third-round pick. Canadian boy getting a base of a 70. Outside of linebacker Jordan Jenkins getting a 75. I think he had three sacks, 40 some tackles last year. Inside linebacker Avery Williamson coming from the Titans as a great get, 85 overall. He's one of the better 3 4 linebackers in the NFL. Again, underrated. You have Minter. Darren Lee trying to put it all together as being a first round pick. Don't want to put the bus tag there yet. That's, oh, yes, yeah, three sacks, some 40 some tackles. Maybe he could be higher than 72. Jet Pants, let me know. Outside linebacker Lorenzo Maldoon, 72. A couple other dudes there. Corners, we have Tremaine Johnson coming over from the St. Louis, oh, L.A. Rams. 82 overall, good starting point there. Nice secondary player. Uh, you have Mo Claiborne, Buster Scrine, Daryl Roberts, Rashad Robinson. You know, work in progress secondary. Free safety, my boy from Florida, Marcus May. I love this pick last year. May had two picks. Led the team last year in interceptions. Uh, I think he had almost 80 total tackles. So he gets a 77. And then you got Jamal Adams here with an 83 overall. Jamal Adams, really, really good player. Didn't even get a pick last year. I don't think he got a pick, but he had two sacks and uh, just over 80 total tackles. The future is bright with him. One of the better young safeties in the NFL. Uh, Kyra Santos gets a 78. And Locke Edwards, Lachlan Edwards, gets an 81. Those are your Jet ratings. Get at me, bro. And finishing up here with the New England Patriots, we gave the MVP, who, let's be honest... Eagle bias included. If if Carson Wentz didn't get hurt, he was going to win the MVP. He won it by default. Tom Brady a 98 overall. I uh, you know could get that fringe 99. I, I just feel like given his age, I think 98s 98s fair. But I mean you could you could talk me into giving him a 99. I just I don't know. But he's still oh out, simply outstanding. Uh, incredible quarterback. How many TDs did he have last year? 30 some. Like, it wasn't even like a like a drastic year uh, for Tom Brady. It was like a, it was like a Tom Brady season. It wasn't like an outstanding Tom Brady season. Uh, I think he had 32 TDs, 8 picks. So, yeah, 98. Uh, running backs, they have just a bunch of them. James White with an 80. Burkett, 79. Jeremy Hill coming for the Bengals, 79. 77 for Lizley. 77 for first-round draft pick, Sony Michelle. Very surprising draft pick. Uh, not exactly sure where he's going to fit in, but I, you know, we'll trust Bill Belichick on this one. They have Bolden here. Fullback Devlin, one of the highest-rated fullbacks with an 83. At wide receiver, you have Julian Edelman coming off an injury. still getting 89. Win healthy. He's one of the, you know, I think you probably could say unanimously the top slot wide receiver in football. Uh, so he holds on to an 89. Hogan's getting an 81. I think last year uh, Hogan had like 400, 500 yards, somewhere in that range. So maybe a little bit too generous. They got Cordero Patterson coming from the Raiders, 78. Good special teamer. Jordan Matthews, former Philadelphia Eagle and Buffalo Bills, 78. Malcolm Mitchell coming off an injury. He's really underrated at 76. Britt, 75. Got a couple dudes there. Tight end, there we go. I was, you know, I wasn't gonna be able to make it up with a perfect 99. I just think when you're this dominant at your position when healthy, you're getting a 99. Gronk for me is almost always gonna get a 99. He is the complete tight end. A thousand yards, eight TDs last year. What he missed three some games, three and a half, four games. Um, so yeah, he's he's literally unstoppable. Uh, Dwayne Allen, 76. Finish that out there. Offensive line, Lee Adrian Waddle getting a 72. Garcia, 71. Who's gonna get the left tackle gig? Who knows. Uh, left guard Joe Tooney got an 81. You have Isaiah Wynn here with a 75. You don't know if he's going to play guard or tackle. 
Maybe could be bumped up a little bit, but I think 75 is a good starting point for him. You might want to slap on the quick dev. Uh, center David Andrews, 85. Shaq Mason, 85. And an 84 for Marcus Cannon. Good offensive line. Played really well in the Super Bowl. Uh, defensive end, we gave Trey Flowers here. Trey Flowers, an 83 overall last season. Trey Flowers led the team with six and a half sacks. Going to the defensive other spot, you have Adrian Claiborne, who had like, what, five or six sacks in one game against Dak Prescott. Old man, pretty much a prototypical free agency move here for the New England Patriots, giving him an 83. D tackle, Danny Shelton coming over from the Browns, 80. Same with Malcolm Brown. Left of side linebacker, Dante Hightower, coming off an injury, went healthy. He's one of the better outside linebackers in football, so I think 87 is a solid starting point for him as he missed pretty much, you know, he only played three, what, he played five games last year. Landon Roberts, been a linebacker, 72. Kyle Van Noy, outside linebacker, 75. Linebackers are not looking hot here for the Patriots. At corner, we got Stephon Gilmore, an 86 overall last season, Mr. Gilmore. I think he had two interceptions, nine pass deflections. 50-some tackles. He's a solid corner. You got Jason McCourty, who had a great year, pro football focus-wise, with the Cleveland Browns. He's an 84. The rest of the corner is still a work in progress. Free safety, Devin McCourty gets an 85 overall last season. Devin McCourty, one interception, had almost 100 total tackles, growed out well from pro football focus. An 80 here for Harmon as well, who uh, led the team with four interceptions last year, seven pass deflections. And then Patrick Chung, for some reason, I don't know how he keeps performing at a decent level, but I'm giving him an 82 overall last year. Uh, he had one pick, nine pass deflections, and just shy of 80 tackles. Special teams, Gustowski gets an 85, and punter Ryan Allen gets an 81. So those are your Super Bowl running up New England Patriots ratings. Again, if you agree with any of the ratings you saw here, or disagree, let me know in the comment section below. As always, share the video, like the video, all that good stuff. Help me get my subscribers out. Help me get that 55K for Madden 19. Until next time, guys, it's C4 today. In a couple more days, we'll be doing the next division. So make sure you stay tuned for that, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.